Hello everyone, I'm uh, Stefanos from uh, Marine Traffic and today with me I'm happy to have George from NISI. Hi George. Hi Stefano, thanks for having us. <laughs> the pleasure is all ours. Uh, so tell us uh, some few words about yourself, uh, NISI, uh, how have you come so far? Right, so my name is George Farhad, I'm one of the co-founders of NISI. Uh, NISI is a mobile application for the ferry passenger market. Um, we are a team of engineers, actually, friends more so, uh, who realized that the ferry industry was quite behind technologically. There was a lot of important information that was just missing out there. Uh, we couldn't find a real, complete user-friendly provider. And at the same time, the industry was lacking a lot of features that other travel markets uh, offer, such as in the airline industry and the train industry. So we decided to build Nisi, which essentially is an extremely user-friendly and free mobile ferry booking application, but comes with an inbuilt live tracking system, which provides the user with updates on their trip, whether it's canceled or delayed. Um, it can also notify them on estimated times of arrivals, and the user can also see where their ship is located, um, and a lot more uh, features, which I won't get into at the moment. But in summary, uh, since we relate to things that we already know, uh, you can think of it as a combination between uh, sky scanner, flight tracker, city mapper, but for the industry, for the ferry industry, and with even more features. Actually, your example is great, and it allow, allows us all to understand uh, what you're doing. Um, so, coming to today, um, what's the current situation in the ferry industry, in uh, the Mediterranean, especially, where you specialize? Right, so as you said, we operate in Greece, Italy, and Spain at the moment. Uh, we've seen a great gradual uh, exponential decrease in sales, predominantly in the passenger uh, area. Uh, we've mostly had cancellations in the past few months. Now, uh, we also have seen a great reduction in the routes uh, as our uh, tracking system looks at what routes are being operated every single day. Uh, we've seen that the major uh, ferry companies all over the Mediterranean, uh, we used to record numbers such as 350 routes uh, in a day, whereas now we're looking at about 90 to 100 on average. Um, and it's very interesting because it's very similar to what's happened in the airline industry, where reports are saying that uh, there's only about a third of flights operating right now, which is expected. But overall, we've had an exponential decrease uh, which is uh, very normal to happen in such cases. Um, yeah. Well, however, in any case, a third of uh, the ferries uh, around the area, it's a massive decrease. Uh, what are the measures taken from the different stakeholders in the industry to ensure viability of theirs and their businesses? Yeah, so indeed it is a massive decrease. And uh, it's not only decreasing the routes, the passengers are even, uh, have decreased by a larger factor. So uh, the number of routes that are being operated now are operating at nowhere near capacity. Um, so companies had to take fast measures to reduce the routes, as I previously said. But at the same time, uh, the costs for operating those routes are quite high uh, compared to the revenue at the moment with the reduction in passengers. Uh, and most uh, routes right now are stay, have to stay operating because there's a lot of islands, for example, in Greece, um, where you need supplies and food. So most of the transportation is there to provide uh, cargo and uh, those supplies to those islands. Um, so in order to continue operating those routes, uh, we've seen the countries step in and there's a lot of subsidized routes to uh, help the routes continue to operate. Um, at the same time, though, there's still some, uh, the funding is not uh, enough to meet the demand of the routes. Uh, and we see that there's a lot of pressure on all the stakeholders here. Uh, but companies are trying to do their best to keep uh, the mainland connected to islands and any other remote areas where it would normally be very hard without those routes, ferry companies to uh, get anything over there. <clears throat> I see. Uh, but that brings me to my next question. Uh, how do the ferry operators, especially the small ones, cope uh, with refunds, cancellation requests? This must be massive. Yes, indeed. So uh, small ferry companies are, were very, were very um, affected by what's happened, but also 
uh, large ferry company at the same time because cancellations and refunds especially uh, create a massive cash flow issue and actually create a cost at the same time. And that's, that could jeopardize the sector. Um, at the start of the whole uh, COVID situation, uh, companies did return the full refund of reservations. But at the moment with the new cancellation policy, which has also been supported by the government, uh, in this case in Greece, um, companies can have the ability to issue a credit voucher instead of refunding the money which gives some breathing space for the ferry companies to continue to operate and reduce the cash flow uh, issue that is being created by, that would have been created by all the cancellations for this summer. That's actually good news. And uh, brings me also to my next question, which is a more personal one. I'm wondering, uh, shall I cancel my ferry tickets? I mean, I have booked for this summer to go to my hometown in Syros. And uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, shall I cancel, refund, ask for a voucher, or wait? Right. So I think, uh, well, based on the cancellation policy that is uh, currently in action, um, you can wait up to one day before your scheduled departure time to request the credit voucher. So you can wait and see how things uh, turn out to, to, to change. But uh, we have to look at this from a domestic travelers perspective and an international travelers perspective. So domestic travelers, um, we would suggest for them to wait because for example, in Greece, um, there is a, we've seen that there are signs of the government easing those restrictions of travel. So we expect that in June and July, there are gonna be, uh, we are gonna be allowed to travel uh, from mainland to islands. So I would wait in this case, your case, um, but for international uh, travelers, um, it seems like still cross-country borders are still on lockdown. So we would still suggest to wait, um, but you can uh, also request a credit voucher for any travel that you have organized and uh, hopefully do it again next summer. In this case, I will follow your advice. Uh, I will wait to see yeah. what I will do. Uh, but uh, due to the fact that things are getting better, and maybe at some point operations will even go back to normal. Uh, what are the challenges? I mean, are we ready for this? Would it be an easy task or a tough one? Right, so there's going to be a lot of challenges with going back to uh, the status quo. Um, but it's going to all be gradual, so it won't be in the flip of the switch, of course. Um, mainly because there is a uh, large cost with uh, bringing back all this back into operation. Uh, so this will take time and it will take a lot of money to do for the ferry operators. But at the same time, uh, based on the restrictions that are currently in place, first, let's call it domestic restrictions are going to be lifted. So we won't, we're going to have a portion of what the normal passenger uh, market is like. So that would require a gradual increase in the routes. Um, at the same time, then, once the international um, restrictions also start being lifted, uh, we will then see, again, a gradual increase again for uh, meeting the demand. But of course, that is all subject to how those restrictions are going to be lifted, in what manner and what uh, safety procedures are going to be implemented by the governments in order to make sure that this transition is a safe, but uh, a safe and gradual one. That's very interesting to hear and actually thank you for all this uh, useful information on uh, the market. Thanks for being here with me. Uh, I do really hope that our next meeting will be a virtual one, but an in-person one. And, thank, you. Uh, thank you. It was my pleasure uh, being here with you and I hope so too that our meeting is, is a personal one, hopefully once the situation is over. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.